Well, hello. I'm with uh, Luke Hass. We're uh, at his home in Ellesmere. Yes. And uh, that's Thank you. You're originally from Ellesmere or from Delaware? I'm from Wilmington. Wilmington? Yeah, we came out here in 1956. 56? Where'd you go to high school? Sally's? You Wilmington High. Wilmington High. Yeah. The old one on Delaware Avenue? Yes. Okay. Our class was the first class that graduated from the new school. Oh, so you actually did get to the new school, which is now yeah. Cap Calvary. Yes. Right. Okay. And uh, what year was that? It had to be, I'm going to guess, 61. I'm very bad at years. In, uh, well, I know you and I are the same age. Yeah. Okay. Okay, 75. Yeah. So I, I graduated from Conrad, but I took a little extra time. <laughs> so, but 61, I would say. Yeah, Conrad, you knew a lot of people that I knew. Uh, Probably. Yeah. Paul Allen. Uh, that's familiar. I did know Teddy Henry. Yeah. High school was not a very happy time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I knew Teddy Henry there. But And you went to Wilmington, and yeah. uh, you probably knew Joe Harris? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I think Joe's younger than the... Right, he's yeah. a, a little bit of, of the younger side. of the sax. Okay. Were you playing music? You, we were in the high school band, or anything? No. No. Did you play music? I had, I had a vocal group, but the, the musical director told me to Forget the group. Right. And he, he, he was more or less telling me they didn't have the talent than I did okay. at that time, you know. Singing. Yes. Where was this group? At school? At Wilmington High. Yeah. 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 We had uh, all these guys. They wanted to be in a group, but they really couldn't sing. Right. right, right. <laughs> you know. Uh, like, did you practice on the street corner? Did you have that classic idea? Yeah, pretty much. We, we always had a place like Happy uh, Hours, or I think that was the name of that TV show down on Union Street, Fusco's. And we used to go in there. Okay. And it was like the happy days, the old the old days, the good days. About what year was that? I had, it was in the 50s. You were in high school? What year did you graduate high school? It was the first, I, I'm bad with years. You don't remember? Okay. No. We're, I'm guessing 61. I yeah. just on the fact that we were the best. Well, it might even be before that. Before that, yeah. 60 maybe? Yeah. Okay. Because I was, I remembered, uh, when I was on Williams Charts, it was right. 62. 62. I had to change your ways out, and it was it went all the way up to 22, which was pretty good. And was that your first one, Change Your Ways? Yeah. Really? Now, I noticed that all your recordings weren't made here. They were made other places. Change Your Ways was, it was done here. Okay. But uh, The Walk, and uh, we did that in uh, Camden, New Jersey. Okay, so not too far away. And I'll never forget that particular night we had a, a, a thunderstorm, everything went out. That was with Jimmy McCracken, that was, okay. that was with his band. Right. Then, they had, of course, they had that extra power, what do you call it? Generator. Gener generators. Everything came back on, and we, we finished the session. They just spliced the tape, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, the one that was recorded here, what, what label was that? It was R2. R2? Arton. Arton. Which was in Oakland, California. Right, that's where my But we did it here and then Jimmy took it with them. I see. So. And they added, um, if you listen to the recording, he added the spoons. There was a, okay. a spoon player. Yeah. Okay. And they, they added that into it. Uh -huh. But it was done here. Okay. Did you actually go out there to record anything or was it that? I was out there, yeah. yeah. I did uh, three or four songs and uh, that was the advanced I heard of that. Berkeley. It was uh, Oakland, California. Oh, okay, it was close. Okay. But uh, we recorded, like, I knew, like, one was my tune and a couple of them were Jimmy's. Right. But that was, never got none out of okay. I mean, it never was released or nothing. How'd you, how'd you uh, get to know Jimmy McCracken? I won a talent show. Okay. I forget the name of the place, it was on the east side. Of, and I was pretty much one of the only white guys there. Okay, was that Wilmington? You saw yeah. Crackling was here? Yeah, he was here. His, okay. He married his wife from uh, Wilmington. Oh, okay. Beulah. Beulah. She passed first and then Jimmy passed. But um, mm -hmm. I stayed with Jimmy uh, at his home for one week. Okay. And Beulah treated me like the king, you know. It was just unbelievable. Now, where, what home was that? Where was that? It was in Oakland. In Oakland. Okay. Yeah. 
So he, he was here, you, you, you won a talent contest? Yeah. So it seems to be and that's question. how I got to meet Jimmy. Right. It was, part of the deal was you're going to get a recording contract. Right. And that's how I met Jimmy. Okay. Now, yeah. the walk was actually on a couple different labels, wasn't it? I know it was on VJ. VJ, yeah. We, we picked that particular label. We picked the wrong label because we had no idea that they were on the brink of bankruptcy. Yeah, I was about to ask of that. I mean, yeah, yeah. because I, I, I could have picked closer ones, but we right. thought at the time they had four seasons. Right. They had a lot of things going for them, but we had no idea that the financial was uh, going down the toilet, you know. So and that's amazing. They almost uh, uh, saved themselves because they had the Beatles for a little while. I know. You know? Well, everybody did at one time. That's true. <laughs> but, you know, if they were smart, they could have, you know, yeah. hung on to them. I was I got the record hanging out on my wall and in, in my own of the, the VJ label because I was so proud of being on, on VJ. VJ. Yeah. yeah, see they're a long history there. Yeah. You know, from like Chris Powell and Blue Flames. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, which is early fifties to the Beatles. Yeah. And then they pretty much disappeared after that. Yeah. VJ. Yeah. I actually mm. wonder about that. Well I guess a lot of labels are disappearing now. Yeah, but yeah, back then though. With the way the the new technology you know. So here around town, um, musicians that you knew around town, I mentioned Teddy Henry is someone who yeah. you really knew. Well, I, I knew Teddy members. very well because I actually used his guitar player, Jerome oh, Jefferson, yeah. to play with me for really first, I think. Okay. I haven't seen, uh, seen Jerome for a while. Yeah, he's, uh, we, we met with him when we met with the Continentals. He uh, seems to be, you know, as we old people say, he's still sharp. Yeah, he's, I think he's a couple years older than we are. Those I are, heard. I heard. Excuse me. I heard that he's uh, learning the keyboard now because he was always a guitar player. I, uh, I can't picture him playing the keyboard. I can't picture him playing either one actually. Yeah. But because <laughs> I didn't know him, I don't think he went to Conrad. Only two of the no. the Continentals went. Well, to he Conrad. lived. Uh, I was on Scott Street. In Wilmington, mm -hmm. between six and seven, mm -hmm. he was on Dupont Street, somewhere in that area. Okay. But uh, we we ended up meeting, and uh, mm -hmm. we played a lot of gigs together, me and Jerome. Yeah, he has a uh, uh, quite a history. I, I know him from from early on, from Teddy and the Continentals, actually. Yeah. And then I noticed that he played with uh, Joe Harris, yeah. uh, and uh, ended up doing some work with Effers Bethea. Did you ever know Efforts Bethea? Yeah. He uh, came into town late in the 60s and uh, he made a few records and I just have to notice that Jerome was uh, associated with him making yeah. music. So he spanned the 60s. He was with us just about everyone. But uh, so, yeah, Jerome was a giant here. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> okay, well, I, I brought some records. Let me show these records to you. I don't know that we'll get them on camera. Well, this, uh, this might. Like this. I should have brought my bases with me. Oh, okay. Billy Graves. I, this is just a cover. But Billy Graves, you don't know this, was the first Delawarean to have a hit in the 50s. Just, just hold it up towards the camera. So. Yeah, this is not his hit record. Yeah, yeah that's good. That's perfect. That's a, a later one, but you see he was with Monument. Oh, all that yeah. Time, so. That's where. Uh, uh, what's his name? Orbison. Yeah, Roy Orbison. He was with them for a long time. Yeah. But he had one hit record in the 50s called The Shag is Totally Cool. <laughs> okay. And he was on the Jimmy Dean show. And Jimmy Dean used to have the New Time show on top yeah. of Yeah. Used to be with him for a while. This is not the original vinyl, but it has some names on it. And I've asked you about these before. Of course, it has Vinnie Rago's name on it. Yeah. Hold it up so we can see it. Okay. Did you, did you know Vinnie Rago? I never met him. Never first, met him? But I knew of him. You know. Everybody knew of him. Yeah. And I never met him. I talked to his son, but that's another story. But there was a label here that Vinnie Rago had called Universal. Are you familiar with the Universal label? I heard of it. Yeah. It came out before, uh, uh, and this is an early group, 59. And again, you see the Rago name on here. Yeah. This is the original uh, Tick Tick Talk by Teddy and the Continentals, and it names his um, musicians. I want to see if you, you've heard of any of these guys. Because uh, they were, 
they were Frankie and the Cenos. They became sort of a band for uh, a, a number of people, and then after that, Joey and the Challengers kind of took yeah. up, took over as, as kind of a house band. But uh, Frank Soprero, did you ever know that name? From yeah. you? Uh, uh, Tony Pache, does that name sound yeah, familiar? Yeah. Player? Uh, Ron David Heiser. Yeah. Uh, also, have you ever heard of a record label in town called ABS A B S? -S? Never heard of it. America's Best Sellers. And it was in Wilmington. They did a lot of rockabilly. And I've asked everyone, and I can't find anything out about them. Now, I don't have an ABS record here, but Teddy McContinell's The Continents. Did you ever know The Continents? Just from you playing. From me, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Larry and I have talked to them uh, and met with them, and we're still trying to track down the lead singer. Teddy and the Continental. I got a lot of Teddy and the Continentals. That was on Richie. Richie, yeah. Richie yeah. Label. Uh, these are all Richies. Uh, and, and this one here, Joey and the Challengers, just backs them up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Gerald Chape, not Gerald Chavis, James Day Chavis. Did you ever see this label? The Chavis label? Yeah. I have a question. How did your parents like your singing career? My father, my, I lost my mother when I was 13, so, but she always would say, she was, she said, I could see your name up in lights, and uh, she wasn't too far fetched because her name is up in lights, but it's a sub shop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, uh, but my father loved it. My father came from the Italian uh, show on the radio. He was a singer. On the Wilmington show? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're going to have a... Uh, I kind of still sponsor on that. I guess it's WILM, I'm not sure. WILM is still there. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing. But uh, they... It's Joe Canavo and his daughter is the... the MC on the show. Hmm. Great job, she does a great job. I was on there when I she interviewed me. When was this? Two, was year, two years ago. A Sunday morning? Yes. Okay. Tell yeah. me more about your musical career. I mean, so... Well, when I won that talent show, that was the beginning of it. Uh-huh. And uh, I, I was writing songs like crazy. I can't even write a song now for some reason. But I, and all my songs, were different. No songs were the same. Like I, I'm gonna, I want Steve to hear one of the, I want to give him a CD with a lot of the stuff that I've written. Okay. And you can see that <clears throat> nothing's the same. It's, you know, they, like one a guy comes out with a hit, the next song almost sounds like that hit. Yeah. You know, pretty much. But uh, that's how I ended up meeting Bob Lowry, because my brother-in-law, who became my manager. Uh, went out and got Bob so he could put my music down in, on script, you know, so I can get a copy written and all that stuff. So what, what was your first band name? Believe it or not, uh, he, he said the name of my band, but I never knew there was another band. It was Lou Kaz and, and the Teen Kings. Huh. That was my original band. Bobby DeFebo, you, you know Phoebe's? Yeah. yeah. That, that would be his brother. What? Bob's down the beach down, and uh, Jerome Jefferson was in it. Uh, but Boise in it? Boise? Nah. Boy, Boise was mostly jazz, you know. But uh, I did uh, quite a few jazz with Boise. And when he played on my record, I, you got to hear that break, because uh, my music wasn't really his thing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How would you describe your music? Old fashioned rock and roll. Old fashioned rock and roll. Jerry Lee Lewis, Elvis Presley, huh? back in that. And so, this first band, I mean, did you, I mean, you made. We did all, all the, the, like the top 40. Okay. Did you play out at weddings or. Oh, yeah. I mean, tell me, what was. What, what did we you, did, we did a lot of different. Did you have other jobs? I mean, this was just kind of something you did at nights and weekends. It wasn't your full time job. No, no, no. Okay. I never really made a whole lot of money until I started playing at a place called Borelli's. Oh. It was on 6th six, six and Union. So you did kind of weddings, you played out at the yeah. Italian festival, maybe? I or was up there. 
places like that? I was, I was up there until they thought that they were going to bring out the entertainment from outside and not use nobody local no more. Huh. That's Tony Latina. <laughs> All that was there, and so there was a local scene, so you played, did you play in nightclubs, did you play, where, where did you play? Around yeah, here, early? yeah, well, Borelli's was the main thing, I was there eight years. I'm sorry, where? Borelli's. Where was that? It's, it was a blue, blue parrot after. Oh, okay, right on Union Street. Uh, back in the heyday, it was Ben Tonics at one time. Okay. Then it was Borelli's, and for eight years, we packed them in there. So you played like Friday night, Saturday night? Yeah, people a lot of the in. guys, Anheuser played there. And this was a lot of the, the big bands played there. And this, this was in the 60s, this is your first? Yeah, band. that was through the 60s and 70s. Okay, and was, what about further bands? After the initial band, was there a second band, third band? After I started recording, there was no bands no more. Oh. I so would just go out and, like, and perform by, pretty much by myself. I had a yeah. drummer and a piano, that was it. A drummer and a piano? I played the piano and uh, I had a rubber. Interesting. And we, two pieces, we played uh, New Year's Eve's and for four years at the same place. So we, we, we could have been too Where? bad. Where? St. Anthony's. Oh, St. Anthony's. New Year's And Eve. that was a tough crowd up there. <laughs> <laughs> really? Your church was the tough, the tough crowd, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we used to have the boxing matches there, same place? Yeah, yeah. up higher. Okay. For your home? I played in the original room where, um, uh, what the heck was some of them groups that came in there? I can't remember all of them off the top of my head, but uh, he had some really well-known groups come in there. But this was the floor that Bobby Piani took over and made a catering thing out of it, changed it completely, ruined it, ruined it. But upstairs uh, is where the box matches were. Okay. So you made records and you played at bars and restaurants yeah. and stuff like that. What else? What else? That was it. Did you they, go? Did you tour anywhere? Did you go outside of Delaware? Uh, well, we went th through the whole area, Scranton and uh, all them places. Though, but that was the record hop era. Like I went before, they would play your record, and the, all the jockeys would say, "Sing, sing with it." You know, don't. Just mimic, sing with the record. They wanted me to sing with it, so it looked more official, you know. Now tell me about what is a what is a record hop? I explain to me. Oh, in the gymnasium. Yeah, or wherever. I mean, remember, people are, are going to be watching this, and you're great. Oh, they were the good days. They were the good days. No they were the good days when well, all the kids would get there. Set, set and, the scene uh, for me. And uh, you would come on in some of the places, most of the places, that stage, and you would come out there and perform your record. So, so they had. And they would be all at the stage. A dance at a school, yeah. and they played records, sort of like a DJ. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And then they would have the artist come out. Like, yeah. And you know, we hooked at, after the fact that I would hear my record on that station. Oh, I see. That's why we went through all this. Oh, so these were put on by the local well, WAMS kind of local AM. Well, radio. yeah, but it, we went through Scranton, Baltimore, right. all these different places. Who arranged these? Your record company, pretty much. So you had a manager. Yeah, I had a manager. He was my brother-in-law, but uh, Leonard did a, a, a wonderful job. But I should have had somebody more into that field. You know what I mean? Do you think you could have made it if you had? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything bad about anybody, but if you had the right. The way I feel about it, it didn't happen. So right. You, you wrote know, it. I felt like I was good enough. I was as good as as many of them. And you wrote your own material, or not all of it, but you not wrote. Yeah, most of them. Well, pretty much a lot of it. But that's rare. But I loved doing Elvis Presley, Tom Jones. They were my two men there. I loved them guys. Interesting. But uh, what would you say is the pinnacle of your career? Did you play with anybody famous? Share the stage with well, somebody? I, I, I did a duet with uh, what the heck's his name down in Rehoboth. U.S. Bonds. Gary and the U.S. Bonds. Yeah, we did a duet together. Cool. And uh, that was kind of when he was starting to come come down a little bit. But then he came back with a, this little girl of mine. He, he had that certain sound. That, but I remember when Mitch Thomas was playing my records, I went in there one day and uh, he was playing uh, Gary U.S. Bonds. And, and that wasn't really Mitch's music, you know. And he, he got the record, smashed it, and he said, that's the last time you're going to hear that big mouth on my station. <laughs> but he, he must have been in the bad mood or something. 
<laughs> How about your family? I mean, you're going away Saturday night, Friday night, you're going out of town. When I was How your family family in New York, I was going like every two, twice a week, you know, going up there. Were you married? Not no. Oh. Okay. I got married when I was 21, but I was this was still my teenager years. Uh -huh. But my father put up with all this, uh -huh. you know, because I was leave at the drop of a hat, you know. Oh, and were you working, I mean, so... I was, I was making subs. Casapola subs, baby. Hey, we were in our heyday then. Right? We were, we were, sure, I remember as a teenager coming up. Yeah, we were the, like, the hottest thing around at that time, you know. Yeah. We were selling subs like crazy. And then you would leave on a, on a Saturday or yeah, Friday? I, I, I was one of my feeling. father's main men. Like, <laughs> he, he counted on me. Oh. But uh, just like I can on my son. You know? So you said, so you got to a certain age and then, you know, I mean... Well, once I got married, it was a little different. You know? How? And, uh, How was it different? You didn't do as much? You didn't go out as no, much? No, I, I would just... Local. Actually, just stone local. Okay. Yeah, then after that, when my father turned the business over to us, I gave up music. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? That's when I quit music. You quit completely? Yep. What year was that, or what around when was that? You said you played in the 70s down Yeah, it, it had probably been more like in the 80s. And yeah. you didn't, that was it? You stopped yeah. playing? Every now and then I would uh, go to a wedding, Al Santor would always get me up the same. Ooh. I used to try to hide from him. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he, you're coming up and singing. <laughs> And you don't, I mean, at home or anything, you didn't play music at all? I had, I can't say that. I was playing the piano a lot. Now I hardly ever play the piano. But I'm into singing with tracks now. I have the, the stuff upstairs. The what? Singing Tr with tracks. What's tracks? It's almost like karaoke, but it's a little better. Ah, interesting. And uh, I got the whole system up. In, that's my music room up top. Interesting. Now, you, you mentioned uh, Gary U.S. Bob's. Yes. From that old era. Were there any other local musicians who made it big that you ran into like or encountered like Charlie Bracey, for example? I never met Charlie. I was a couple times I was supposed to meet go goats because a guy that knew him very well wanted me to meet him, mm -hmm. but it never happened. And, uh, I mean, how about some of the comments? Of uh oh no, no. Well, I, I knew his manager. Lord Jim. Uh is that his name? Uh, There's another one. It was when Bill Haley was still big in in uh, England. Okay. What the heck was okay. his name? No, he was. No. Yeah, he was. He was. He was big, big time. Yeah, 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 Lord, Lord Jim, right? What is it? Who's this other guy? Was before that. This guy was no longer his manager, but at one time he was, and he was selling equipment, food equipment. Oh. And that's how I met him. Okay. But I can't think of his name on fans. Lord Jim got him into some tax trouble. Really? That's why he ended up going to Mexico. I didn't know this. Uh, because he was kind of on the land, though. You mean Lord Jim or? Lord Jim got yeah. Bill Haley into tax trouble. Pop, you knew his guitar player. Bill Haley's guitar player, didn't you? Well, John, yeah, John yeah. 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 By the way, we're, we've been looking at you the whole trip. What is your name <laughs> and how are you related in here? I'm, uh, I'm Lou, Lou Jr. You're, you're his son? Yeah. Okay. Wait, are you a musician too? I see you're, yes. you know, tell me about a little bit about what you. Um, right now, are I'm not playing a whole lot, but um, I'm always ready ready to go with special occasions. So you and you, you play in bands for a while? Off and on. Yeah. And you had a famous dad growing up here? Yeah. Of course, you had Casapolis, so you're famous in both ways. Yeah, we're too tied up with the story to do it too much, but special occasions, I, I enjoy playing. Did he teach you, or did you just kind of pick it up? Or? I think I was born with, born with most of the town. Oh, all right. So he had nothing to do with it. How did you feel about that, Dad? I had him playing drums when I was playing. Whenever we had a, ha a house thing going on, birthday, whatever, I would play the piano. I had a little set of drums for him to play, and he would play drums. If he got the wrong beat, I would... And then I would, you playing on the wrong team? <laughs> and then all the grown ups, Louie, he's a little kid. <laughs> and that's when the psychologist, that's when the psychologist. Yeah, play drums. Yeah, you can play drums, piano. Cool. But it was. Did you guys ever play together? Oh, yeah, man. Out? Oh, yeah. Not out, not out. Not out. 
But we, well, I, I take that back. We play the comedies. Yeah, we, uh, I we play, play the comedies when they have the outdoor thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my nephew was Anthony Galusha, who was a fantastic guitar player. I don't yeah. know if you ever heard of him. Yeah, certainly. Mm -hmm. You're related to everybody, aren't you? Yeah. Do, do, have you heard of him? Of course. Galusha? Yeah. 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 Of course. We have a very musical family in general. Well, it's funny, like I was telling you about my father being on the Italian show, my sister Vincetta, mm -hmm. who was 94 now, was the star of the show. Mm -hmm. She was the star of the show. I have a picture down there one of these days. I'll show you. This was a radio show? Yeah, it was a radio. Okay. Did you, did you do them live? It was live, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because there are a lot of recordings. I don't have a lot of recordings. A lot of those were recorded. Yeah, well, when I did the interview, that was pre-recorded. Okay. And it's funny because I felt really nervous, but I can't think of her name. I think it's Christine Canova, but she's married and she has another name in between. But uh, we sat and talked for like 20 minutes and she just got you right at ease. And then they, the guy came in and they started uh, doing it. And it, it really came off good. I had to tape with that, that show. So you tell me that you had a, a song that made it into some kind of charts with that was WAMS or something? Yeah, Wayne. So, so right, you remember so, Wayne? You don't. Remember I do. That. Of course, I remember. I'm 64 years old. I remember WAMS, of course. Um, so WAMS local AM chat, and they played. I, had, I, had, I actually had a regional break rat, breakout in Baltimore. Okay. It was on the Buddy Dean show. You familiar yeah, with Buddy, Buddy Dean? Dean yeah. He played my record for 45 days straight. Wow. It was called The Walk when I did that. Okay. And uh, The name of the song was The, the Walk. Walk. The Walk. Yeah. Cool. And uh, the, girl, the, the kids would do the dance. I don't even remember how it goes now. But oh, there was a dance called The Walk. Oh, yeah. yeah. You had a dance name there. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Well, it was Jimmy McCracklin's song. Oh, I see. And I, I recorded it way after he did. But I heard a couple other groups recorded it also. Mm -hmm. It's a neat tune. Yeah. And how did that, I mean, so did somebody gave them a record and they sent it to the WMS, they started playing it and... Well, I would bring my records down to them. Oh, I see. So you just went to the radio station? Yeah. And, right and said... Well, when I, when I came out with the walk, my record was actually a hit in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were doing a, a, a show, like where you mimic your... And, uh, the, 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 the record distributor in that area goes, I want you to meet somebody, to the other people, tell them, it, it was Paul and Paul. No. He goes, I want you to meet, he said, he has a hit record. Within a week, their song was number one. <laughs> <laughs> but I met a lot of people. I, I, I saw a show put together, at, this was in Brooklyn. And uh, it was Dion. And Dion came in with all the charts and he, Went up and put everybody's chart in front of them. And the musical director goes, you really came a long way. Because most, the, the coaster sent a guitar player in to teach the band how to play yakety yak or whatever, you know. So hold on, you played with Dion, is that what you're telling me? Or you I was at the rehearsal show. Oh, you were on the rehearsal show? That's a pretty yeah. famous person. We're famous Gary. I, like that. I had this one guy come up to me and he goes, gets my hand, how you doing? I didn't know him, I don't know who he thought I was. But it was uh, Steve Molina. Okay. Well, Every yeah. day I have to cry. Uh, so he acted like I was somebody. I didn't, but I, I really appreciated that, you know. But uh, little Peggy March was there. Hmm. What's the furthest that you've gone and performed, or in? The, the best I really felt like when I was in Atlantic City, I performed with the Platters. Huh? And I was on TV. It was dead. Well, it's got to be the pinnacle of your career, pretty much. Yeah. So it was Ed, Her Ed Hurst. Ed Hurst was Ed uh, Hurst. Yeah. Cool beans. Well, that is. And that there was a couple other groups, but the the platter one with Tony Williams, but right. but it was with his with, with his ring. Right. I promise you that it was that which was a big hit for them. Did you, play Why you sing a song? Sing us a song. I, I, I want to hear a song. Cool. I was singing when I had I don't know if I had Love Letters out or one of them. I, I forget. It's so long ago. You're talking like 40, 50 years ago. We're going to get you to sing a song here. I'm sure sing your son will be glad. But I have one or two other questions. You played at casinos or Atlantic City? No, oh, it was before the casino. Yeah, that was the Steel Pier. Oh, the Steel Pier. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 
That is very cool. Did you do a tour? Did you ever like do a whole tour? I had a shot and I uh, didn't want to go. Ah, it was a big subs. Jimmy called and he he wanted me to go on tour, mm. but I didn't want to go. Mm. Yeah. You regret that? I was probably. I probably did. <laughs> but I was settled down. Like I was, I was my father's right hand man. Now you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, you didn't do bad there with Castle No, but, and we're still not doing bad. But yeah. That's a hard decision to make a tour. You know, you're leaving everybody, it's tough. So uh, back in the early 60s, uh, there was groupies. Yeah, he, there was, he, was my that, uh... he was my second born. My, my first was a, my daughter, like a little angel. She could sing. She's out there singing. And she she plays where Kitty plays at the uh, hideaway. Okay. Uh, my daughter sings there. Like once every, like every Wednesday, I think. Every, every Wednesday. Who's the band? They do the tracks. Okay, I see. Yeah. That's pretty much the thing uh, mm -hmm. that they're doing today. But uh, you can't beat live music. That's true. You know? You, the bars don't want to pay the live musicians yeah. enough. They don't want to pay them anything. Yeah. Pay yeah. You work for tips. That's yeah. right. And that's why the tracks become so big. Yeah. 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 All right, so can you sing a song for us? What, what the, tell us about the, the, the song that hit the charts, the, the, the that well, that song. Well, I think I think we all do love seventy three. That's one of my pop group. Okay, is that okay with you? I, I think. But uh, well, you want to do something else, but what do you want to be remembered about fifty years from now? This this is a nice little tune. Okay. Uh, uh, this piano, I hope it goes down too. The piano is very out of tune. Yeah, we heard, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to try to avoid a couple of chords on here that are really out of tune. I think I can do it with that song. We'll, we'll do some of it. Okay. You don't have to do the whole song? Do yeah. a chorus or two. This is called uh, Love Set Me Free. All right. I have a, a very good recording of this done, and it was never released, which is unbelievable because. You put it on YouTube and everybody will be able to see it all the time, anytime, you know? Yeah. Give me a recording, I'll play it on the radio. I'm gonna give you a bath. Taken up uh, by a, uh, a really pro 
photographer, uh, Popsy was his name. Have you ever heard of Popsy, Steve? He did all the, the big acts in New York. Mm -hmm. And that's, what, that's, that's when that was done. I was, God, I was young and skinny. And uh, this was what the news journal put out. Put down this way a little bit. Luke Kaz digs uh, showbiz jazz. So we can see this was 19, what was this? 60, I think. 1963. Okay. Wow, June 1963. Okay. Yeah, in the news journal. The write up was very, very good. Nice, cool. nice write up. Very nice. Yeah, I think, yeah. And this okay. was my original group that I had when we were out there playing. This is the group we won the talent show with. Okay. And it was Joe Samlock, yeah. uh, Jerome Jefferson, Howard Scott, we called him Howie, Lou Casby, and Bobby DeFebo. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. All right, so we're actually going. So it's May 20th, 2000.